I'm not getting rough, I'm stating the fact. I got something I have to do. I wouldn't get rough with you anyway. I just up there interviewing Leon. Leon, isn't he neat? Oh, beautiful. It's just amazing. She got the spirit on him. I'm gonna make a liar out of you for ten minutes. I ain't going up there yet. <laughs> Chris, why don't you hold that microphone for him so that it doesn't look like he's, he's not being interviewed? <laughs> Had your ears clean lately? Yeah. <laughs> I used to like to pull us off and hold them up on nose and go. He's still around, praise the Lord. Um, are you all right? Huh? You panting like a lizard? Are you okay? You didn't have to run. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna leave yeah, that. Yeah, you're quick. rolling. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Can you tell us just uh, something about how you came to the Lord, or just exactly how you know how you got led to Him? To the Lord? Yeah. Well, uh, I was, uh, you know, into Satanism and drugs and all that stuff in the '60s, and pretty much into the hippie culture and stuff, and going to college. You know, everybody went to college to avoid the draft. And I was in college and uh, just pursuing my career as an occultist. I'd been studying the occult since I was about 13. I, I was doing a lot of dope and drinking a lot of booze and partying it up and all of a sudden I started getting accosted by these Jesus freaks. Yeah, I don't call them Jesus freaks anymore, but I, in those days I did and there was, there were just these people that, that uh, well they just knew the Lord. I had met a lot of uh, religious people up to then, but that was maybe my first time with meeting really people who are, are really dedicated to Jesus, you know. And they just began to share the love of the Lord with me. You know, I'd heard about the law and I'd heard about how God was going to kill me and burn me over and roast me to ever, forever in hell, you know. And it didn't make much impression on me because I figured I'd be able to talk my way out of it. But it was the love that really freaked me out and I couldn't get away from it. And that's really what was the beginning of the witness. And then I got into Navy boot camp because I was doing so many drugs I blew my deferment and before they could snatch me up for the Army I decided to join the Navy and I, I got into service and I, and I got two Christians for roommates for three months and they just sh continued to share the love of the Lord with me and, and teach me that, that Jesus really just wanted me and He wanted to love me and, and uh, He didn't look down on me and, and everything like that and He wasn't after uh, you know trying to uh, purge me and burn me that He wanted to love me and come into my life and then change it. So. Uh, about just about as we were getting ready to get out of boot camp, I got down on my knees in a mop closet at Navy boot camp, and I asked the Lord to come into my life and be my personal Savior. And that's well, I'm going on my 13th year as a Christian now. I can't say I've always been proud of the way I've acted, but boy, I'll tell you what, Jesus has never left me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, why in a mop closet? I was embarrassed. <laughs> I just went to hide. I went to pray in a place nobody would see me. So I went and knelt down in this mop closet and shut the door, and in private said, God. If you're up there, you know, please just do something with my life, and he did. So how long did your cover-up last? My cover-up? How long before you started sharing? Oh, it didn't or... last at all because it was about 11 and 30 at night when that happened, and I walked back out and sat down in the middle of the table in my underwear and started reading the Bible. <laughs> and when uh, when uh, my two Christian roommates woke up the next morning, they found me sitting in the middle of the table in my underwear reading the Bible. And they got up, and they were real groggy, and they'd been witnessing to me for three months, and they didn't really expect anything to really ever fruit up, I don't think, and they one of them walked by with his towel under his arm, about half asleep, and he walked by and went, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm reading the Bible, and he said, what for? <laughs> I said, oh, I received the Lord last night, and he went, oh, and then he got about three steps down the, down the hallway, and he went, <gasps> you know, and just started going crazy and having a fit, and it was great, and they got up and danced and started slugging people on the back, and I've been sharing the Lord with somebody ever since. When, uh, before you became a Christian, or before you accepted the Lord, um, when you entered the occult and all of this, how did you feel? I mean, did you feel as, what I'm trying to say is, were you searching or did they just approach well, you and you were an unwilling subject? I guess I was searching, yeah. I, I was searching for some kind of spiritual truth. And I didn't know about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, really. I mean, I knew about religion, but I didn't know about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, if you follow what I mean. And, and, and what I did was is I, I just started searching in all kinds of ways to see if I could find some spirituality in the world. And by the time I, by the time I got to on drugs, by the time I was shooting $125 worth of heroin a day, I didn't care if there was a God or not, particularly. I was just out there, you know, just, you know. Now, how did you get into a comedy routine, or well, not routine, but way of 
I started sharing, the Lord. sharing my testimony with people in churches, and I'd get in there and I'd give my testimony, and everybody get bummed out. I really wanted to get the burden for souls, but they get so much of a burden they looked like they were carrying two 50-pound sacks of concrete out, you know. It's blah. So uh, I started adding a joke here and there just to lighten things up. And pretty soon it was the people were getting more blessed out of the jokes than they were the testimony. And so that was the way the Lord used to mature my testimony away from dealing completely in a testimony type thing into a ministry where the people here, you know, like the people here at Jesus Northwest, they accept me as Mike Warnke, not as a Satanist high priest, not as an ex anything, just what for what I can give them right now. And they love me for that. And the Lord used that means, the means of comedy, to do that for me. In other words, I wrote The Satan Seller, and my last album was called Jester in the King's Court. Uh -huh. And the distance between The Satan Seller and Jester in the King's Court is the story of my Christian life as a Christian, growing and maturing. And the next one's called Hey Doc. It doesn't have anything to do about my testimony at all. It has to do with the time I spent in Vietnam. No Satanist, no booger man, no nothing. It's just me and the Lord trucking through the jungle, <laughs> you know. So. Well, um, okay, speaking of all this collection of, uh, of just of your ministries, I've, all, I've been kind of curious, do you, is all of this, are all of these true stories or do you parabolize to help get your message across? You mean the stories about things that have happened to me? Yeah. Yeah, they're all true stories. The only thing I parabolize is the Bible. And I don't do it exactly the King James Version. As a matter of fact, people have called my Bible stories the butchered Bible tales, you know. But uh, no, the stories that I tell, I tell them in a funny and, and humorous way. But yeah, all of them have happened to me. As a matter of fact, I have never preached about anything I haven't experienced, okay. ever. Even backsliding. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, you know, are you, what are you getting into now? Are you? Well, I'm writing a lot more, which I really enjoy. I'm writing another book. It's called Letters to Those That Live at the Edge. That should be out next year. I just finished my third album. I'm writing a column for three different magazines, Keystone in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, Contemporary Christian Acts here in the States, and Harmony Magazine. I'll be a, contempor a, contempor uh, a contributing uh, writer for Group Magazine and some others. And uh, I've been asked to write the screenplay for a musical comedy that has to do with the Lord. Uh, I've even been asked to write jingles for greeting cards. So I, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting into writing a lot more. I think that's going to be the next phase of my life and my ministry is uh, what I produce on paper. I really, pre I really appreciate the Lord for it too, you know. Yeah, I heard you had a contract with Doubleday. For uh, yeah, it's not for publication. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Excuse me, itching my nose. Oh, go right ahead. Just don't blow it. Oh, yeah. Um, so what, is there any uh, message or word that you'd like to yeah. offer us? All yeah. Here? I think the one thing that my, my, my ministry and all of that I've experienced in the Lord revolves around one thing basically and that is if anyone will give themselves to the Lord then the Lord will make them the best thems that they are. If you want to find yourself, if you want to be what you were created to be, the only way you can do it is to latch on to God and He will make out of you what you are supposed to be and that will be better and greater than anything you could possibly imagine. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. You don't mind a sweaty hug. Hey, you're getting one too. <laughs> uh.